All right, um, I'm Katie Gross. I will be presenting on the dynamics of stratification in the Veterans Administration. It's also known as the Department of Veterans Affairs. And some of you may have already kind of heard about the issues that are going on in the system today. Um, there's a huge problem with backlog. Um, veterans have had to wait months or even years on their claims. And many do not even know how to correctly um, apply for it. And I actually found this picture um, on the Rachel Maddow show. Um, she talked about it and interviewed a veteran. And it's just kind of an example of how behind um, the system is and, and going through the claims and um, assisting the veterans. And um, she made a really good point. Um, I guess only about 3% of veterans actually file their claims correctly and the other 90% have had issues with it. And so she said, since there's such this large, percent, large percentage who are having issues, um, it's obviously a flaw in the system rather than the veterans um, having even their fault. And so, um, so the goals of the Veterans Administration are they assist the men and women who have served in the armed forces through benefits and therapeutic pra practices in areas of both mental and physical health. And this includes all branches of the military, so Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, um, and the Air Force. And they increase access to healthcare and offers housing, higher education, and other programs. And they really like concentrate on um, the long-term outcomes of it. So I explored um, in what areas stratification exists in the system. I went through three areas of gender, um, vet uh, minority veterans, and age. And so the formal definition of stratification is the procedure or methods by which some achieve power over others. And so oftentimes when we think of stratification, we think of intentional exclusion of a certain group, like Jim Crow laws or derogatory comments towards women. But there's also another type, which is unintentional, that is embedded into um, the structure of many social systems. And this is the type that exists in the VA. And um, it's also highly bureaucratic. And um, the sociologist Max Weber, a lot of his, works sh his work shows how um, bureaucracy can lead, to, can lead to various forms of um, stratification. So the methodology, methodology I used to um, collect some of my data was I explored existing scholarship on the VA, so different programs they offer and their benefits. And um, I looked at web materials, and I was also able to conduct a couple of interviews with veterans. And so um, the VA is required to equally serve all veterans, regardless of race, race ethnicity, or gender. Spe specific branches of the agency have been established specifically to provide for minority and women veterans. And, um, so um, actually under Title 38, it was passed by Congress in 1984. It requires um, the VA to serve all veterans equally, regardless of race. Um, one of the branches is called the Minority Veterans Program Coordinator, and its main purpose is to just kind of expand local awareness and also to listen to minority veterans' concerns about the system and kind of troubles they're having, and they address these on a more personal level. Um, there's also the Advisory Committee on Minority Veterans. Um, this is also a similar program that they have, um, and they're actually required um, to report to Congress annually just of the concerns that these minority veterans have. And um, they also have period periodic visits and meetings with veterans um, just to listen to their issues. And so since they do require those things, how is stratification present regarding minority veterans? Well, a lot of them are unaware of the benefits that they are eligible for. And they also have previous lack of health care outside VA. A lot of them don't have um, the resources to actually make medical appointments. And um, there was actually a um, study that was done. It was a phone survey. Um, each survey was about 20 minutes long, and they interviewed um, people um, of all different races. Um, I think it was Hispanic, Asian, African American, and white. And they did find that whites um, utilize the system a lot more. Um, some of the reasons for this was um, they um, don't have the resources to set up appointments. Um, 
in order to even be acknowledged a disabled veteran, they have to um, have a previous um, medical appointment to actually receive a diagnosis. And so, how is it present regarding women veterans? Um, system has failed to acknowledge women's responsibility as caregivers and their needs are underestimated. So, um, a study found that women veterans are also um, more at risk of mental disorders than male veterans are. Part of it is because they do have the expectations of domestic services and being the caregivers if they do have families, um, and that can kind of lead to um, more mental issues. Um, also, they're more likely to experience sexual trauma in the war than men are. And um, so, since the VA hasn't really taken care to um, personally address these issues towards them, they um, have often, women veterans have often gone to um, other community services rather than the VA. And then stratification by age. This section was particularly interesting to me because I was able to um, interview veterans when I, to collect my data on this. And um, one of the veterans I interviewed, he's um, a disabled Vietnam veteran with PTSD. And then the other one, um, he served four years in the Marines and um, was in Iraq for a little while. And now he's a student at Boise State and he's able to pay for his school because he does receive education benefits from the VA. And um, so it was really interesting because the younger veteran, um, he didn't see anything wrong with the system. When I asked him questions, he said he's always had a positive experience. And the older veteran said that he's had to, he's experienced a lot more backlog. And um, he said that this may be the reason because um, just recently, like Iraq and Afghanistan veterans who have come back from the war, they have received immediate attention. And the Vietnam War was more unpopular. And so Vietnam veterans have kind of been getting overlooked. And, Overall, the older veteran had had um, a satisfactory experience, like receiving treatment for his PTSD. He said that the system is improving, but it's too underfunded. Um, but he just recently started attending veterans meetings. They're kind of slowly like establishing more um, smaller scale organizations so that they can work with them on a more personal level. And um, more like, more older veterans are applying, and so this is kind of making the VA also aware that these older veterans do need um, more assistance than what they're actually getting. And so um, this can also improve conditions for minority and women veterans as well if they continue to keep these um, small outreach clinics going. So conclusion, um, dynamics of stratification exist in the system but are not tremendously visible. So there's no blatant exclusion of any group, obviously, since legally they are required to serve people regardless of their race or gender. But it is, you can still see it that it's embedded in the system because um, a lot of them are more unaware of what they are eligible for. And so, but it, it is slowly improving and um, Hopefully it continues. Also on the Rachel Maddow show, they, um, they're kind of changing the system in the way that they're making um, filing for claims. They're gonna be able to do it electronically rather than all the paperwork. So hopefully that will be something that will benefit them. So I guess I'll leave the rest open for any questions. Yeah. <clears throat> do you think that the root of the problem is some sort of discrimination or that they just haven't gotten high-tech enough and have it all I think that would electronic. be part of the reason. Um, I think what it kind of needs to do, um, what the system needs to do is just make minority veterans or women just more aware. I think that's kind of the discrimination that exists. It's not, you know, a blatant exclusion, but um, I think they could probably just make more efforts to try harder to do that. Do you think that the um, electronic application for benefits is going to continue to satisfy with older veterans? 
that's what I kind of thought too when I read that because you know younger veterans are probably you know they'll have more of an ability to navigate that system so um, yeah I did consider that so hopefully it works <laughs> so it might make it a lot faster um, for the workers to go through all of that so how many people did you interview and like what did you intentionally target like younger versus older or is that something that just kind of happened or presented itself as you conducted your research? It kind of just happened. Um, my dad is actually a veteran so I kind of had access to that and I was able to interview someone who's in his support group and he also had a son who was um, who, or who I interviewed who was the Marine and so he said like oh you can interview my son also because he receives benefits from them so that's that happened. <laughs>